All right. Was what Jesus did on the cross evil? Was it evil for Jesus to lay down his life? Okay, that's the question I want you to think about. When Jesus laid down his life for your sins, and not yours only, but for the sins of the whole world, was that evil? Alright, consider Genesis 3. When Adam and Eve ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So now we know good and evil. So when Jesus laid down his life, was that good or was that evil? That's the question I want you to think about. Okay. Now, while you're thinking about that, let me read a comment from Joe Scigliani. He says, God tempted Abraham in the King James should be Bible. I think it's James, Jesus' younger half-brother who said God does not tempt anybody. Alright, so uh, um, what I gather from this is that Joe, or I'm sorry, Job? I thought it was Joe. My bad. Job says uh, he's implying that there's a contradiction in the Bible. And now you ought to know that there cannot be a contradiction in the Bible. The Bible is the Word of God. If you have a contradiction, the whole Bible's no good. It's not from God. All right, it's the Word of man, not the Word of God. Because a bone of him cannot be broken, so also cannot the Scripture be broken. Okay, same thing. Now, let's take a look at what he's talking about here in these, these two examples that he gives in his comment. And one easy way to find both of them is to do a word search for the word tempt. And Bible Gateway is going to give us a suggested result right off the bat that points directly to one of the two examples that Job gives. James chapter 1 verse 13 Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempts he any man. Alright, and then of course, the other example, right off the bat, the very first use of the word tempt in the Bible, <clears throat> Genesis 22, And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And then if you go to chapter 22, if you've read it and understand it, you know this, this is when he says to Abraham, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there up for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. Alright, so, you know the story. Surely. And if you know the story, then you know Abraham was going to offer his son as a burnt offering, a sacrifice for sins and God prevented him from doing that but God but Abraham showed that he was faithful as faithful and trusting in God as anybody could ever be to offer his own son because he he had that that much faith that much trust in God and then of course God rewarded Abraham and then God sent his son to be the burnt offering, the sacrifice, the sin offering for the sins 
of the whole world. Okay? Now, let's go back to the comment. God tempted Abraham in the KJV. I think it's James, Jesus' younger brother, younger half-brother, who said, God does not tempt anybody. Uh, well, let's go back. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil. You see that? See, Job left that part out, didn't he? That's kind of like the most important part of what's being taught here in James chapter 1. When you teach, it's important that you understand. It really is. Because you don't want to fall into a situation where you're leaving things out, like the most important things. And this is certainly the most important part of this teaching is these two words here, with evil. For God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempts he any man with evil. All right, that's important. The simple, the 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 teaching is is simple. Okay. It, like for example, if you go to Matthew chapter six, and Jesus gives us a guideline, if you will, of how to pray. And he says, "When thou prayest, go into thy closet." And after this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now this right here is very important to understand, lead us not into temptation. God does not lead us into temptation. So when we pray, we're praying, don't lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. So God's not going to lead us into temptation. Rather, God is going to deliver us from evil. So when we read James chapter 1, verse 13, God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempts he any man with evil. Okay? That's important to understand. Not, not just to read it, but to believe it. And when you believe it, surely you're going to understand it. And uh, the belief, believing that you, what you're reading is from God, that's really as important as anything and you if you've uh, followed followed me um, you know followed along with my videos I I'm very adamant on that and uh, very consistent on that that faith is without faith I don't know how anybody understands anything faith is the key it's always been the key so I appreciate uh, the comment and hopefully I shed some light on this for somebody and for even you Job I hope you're watching I hope that makes sense I hope it becomes easier clearer and simpler to understand that there is no contradiction in the Bible all right none at all of course when I say the Bible I'm talking about the King James Bible that's important okay all right, thank you.